All right, well, from uh, the international stage to here in the U.S., uh, here to discuss the issue of GMOs is Jeffrey Smith. Now, he's the author of the book, Seeds of Deception. Jeffrey, wel welcome to the program. Uh, Thank you. Very briefly, uh, you know, some people say, well, these GMOs can help solve world starvation and yada, yada, yada. Uh, why, 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 not, why not allow these companies to push their seeds wherever they want? First of all, the experts agree that GMOs have nothing to offer to feed the world, eradicate poverty, or establish sustainable agriculture. That was clear in a report done by over 400 scientists over several years, sponsored by several UN agencies. In fact, when GMOs were introduced in, in India 10 years ago to much hype and celebration, now the government finally admits that it's responsible for widespread suicides, an estimated quarter of a million suicides among farmers and most of which have been blamed on BT Cotton's failure to yield and allow farmers to even pay back their high interest loans. So why aren't we seeing this kind of outreach here in the U.S.? I mean, I just want to bring up a, a fact. I mean, in Europe, there's almost no GM crops, uh, while here in the U.S., uh, nearly 75 percent of our food products are GE tainted. Why aren't Americans as outraged? Until recently, most Americans had no idea what GMOs were. However, we're now seeing more and more awareness and agitation. And this has resulted in a natural demand for labeling so people can reject GMOs, since most Americans say that if GMOs were labeled, they would reject it. Right now, 55 U.S. congressmen have sent a letter to the FDA demanding labeling. Recently, one million signatures were handed into the FDA. But we're not going to wait for the federal government. It's now happening at state levels. In Connecticut... Why shouldn't, why shouldn't we wait for the federal government? Well, unfortunately, the Obama administration has been walking lockstep with Monsanto and basically has taken some pro-GM people from Monsanto and related organizations and put them into key positions, like food safety czar, like USDA uh, secretary, like USD, USAID director. So basically, if we're dealing with the federal government, we're dealing with an arm of Monsanto. It almost seems to me, and tell me if you think this is a far stretch, that you can describe Monsanto as a pseudo drug pusher. I mean, if a company like McDonald's put, say, crack in its burgers, hooking consumers on their food, and just to throw in some fun, uh, sued anyone that went to Burger King for alternative food sources, uh, we would be up in arms. Uh, it, it just surprises me that there isn't as much widespread outrage uh, on the Hill, for example, over this issue. When people learn about Monsanto and why it was consistently voted every year as the world's most evil company, they get outraged. However, Monsanto spends billions of dollars in disinformation. In fact, last week, one of its lawyers threatened to sue the, the state of Vermont if the Vermont legislature passed a labeling law that would require people to label genetically engineered foods. And, and do you see this changing in any way? I mean, I know you said you sound a little, little, little bit optimistic. People are sort of catching on. But, I mean, let's be realistic. Money talks. Lobbyists talk. Uh, U.S. opinion doesn't necessarily change policy. Well, there's been labeling bills proposed in over 20 states this year, which is unprecedented. But I see real possibility happening in California, where in two weeks from now, they're going to hand in 850,000 signatures to force the measure to go on the ballot so it'll be voted directly by the citizens. And then we'll probably see Monsanto raining down a, a multi-million dollar disinformation campaign trying to get people to vote against their best interests. But I think it will pass in California. And once companies have to label their products, I think they'll remove GMOs rather than admit that they use them. Well, Jeffrey, uh, I, I do want to thank you for your time. I know that if I was at the supermarket and was looking at a piece of beef and realized that it was uh, made of some weird genetically modified Franken, God knows what products, I probably wouldn't choose to buy it. So it's no surprise that uh, the lack of labeling is what is uh, perhaps uh, keeping some of us in the dark. But it certainly is an important issue and one that we will continue to talk about later in today's shows. That was Jeffrey Smith, the author of the book Seeds of Deception.